Hi, and welcome to another episode of Fruno Connections. I'm Clayton Pattison with Fruno Technical Support. And I'm Eric Kunz, Senior Product Manager. You know, we've made a lot of progress, Eric, on this retrofit over the last, you know, several episodes. That's right, you know, uh, there's a lot of cuts, a lot of wiring, a lot of cable pulling, <laughs> you know, but the nice thing yeah. is we can see the finish line. We've got a couple more things to install, but we're pretty darn close. Yeah. So we've got the TZ Touch 2 15.6 inch displays mounted in the dash. Mm -hmm. We've got the holes opened up for the FM 4800 radio and the Fusion stereo. So we're ready to pretty much install those. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to add something that Team Fortunate hasn't had in the past, which is the FI70 data organizer. The FI70 is really nice because it's a big data organizer and you can mm -hmm. see, you can program it to have depth, big depth numbers or big temperature numbers. Yep. You can have depth trend graphs or temperature trend graphs mm -hmm. or even show AIS information and it's in a place where anybody on the boat, especially the guys in the cockpit who are fishing, can actually see it as well. So it's really useful. Now the other thing we added was the BBWX4 Sirius Satellite Weather Receiver. Now that's live, real-time satellite weather information coupled with their extensive stereo network. So they can have tunes and live weather on the boat at any time. That's right. They can have Howard Stern playing and mm -hmm. looking at the weather at the same time. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. And you can program individual channels right from within your TC Touch 2 MFD. The user interface is really designed to be able to just easily swipe up, change mm -hmm. channels, even raise and lower the audio volume directly from the TZ Touch 2 MFD. Yeah, which is really it, sweet. It's super easy. Yeah, yeah. And we also added the MCU-004, which is the remote keypad for the TZ Touch 2s. Now, that keypad, it gives you a bunch of physical buttons and a roto knob and a joystick to control it. And what it really does is it turns the system from a touchscreen into a hybrid touch. That's right. Yeah, you can easily, you know, especially when you're pounding into it, the weather's rough. The great thing about that remote keyboard is you can put it anywhere. You don't have to reach up on a normal hybrid touch and actually get at the display. We're mounting it right next to the wheel. So if it's rough and they're punching into it, as yeah. we know it can get that way here on the Columbia, at the yeah, mouth yeah. of the Columbia, mm -hmm. you know, you can have one hand on the wheel, one hand resting your palm on or right next to the keyboard yep. at MCU-004 mm -hmm. and be controlling either MFD directly without having to worry about it or getting tossed around or trying to hit a moving target, which is what can happen sometimes with touchscreens. So you can add one or more mm -hmm. MCU-004s to any system. It's really nice. Yeah, it's perfect. The other thing we're going to add is a DST-800, okay. which is a remote temp depth and water speed sensor. Perfect. And that depth okay. sensor is actually a 235 trans, uh, kilohertz transducer, which is really good because it doesn't interfere with any of the mm. other frequencies. Yep. And because it's such a high frequency, it'll get down to some really shallow water. Yeah, it's as shallow as 18 inches. Really? Yeah, that DSC 800 can wow. you know, really get down shallow. It's really nice. The other thing we're going to add is an SDU-001 remote chart card reader. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about that is we're going to mount that inside the console. Okay. And the reason why we put it on the console is that you can actually store your waypoints or your charts or your imagery. You can save images on, on the MFDs mm -hmm. and have that secure at the end of the day. You slam your console shut and lock it. Nobody's going to be able to walk right up to your boat, open a little latch or a little cover on your MFD and steal all your information or your f expensive charts like they can with some yeah. of our other competitors' products. It's, you know, it's really unfortunate that that happens. Yeah, it is. But, you know, with the SDU-001, mm -hmm. you can mount it in a secure location and it'll give you peace of mind. Nobody's going to be able to walk up to your boat and just steal any of that data or a three or 400 or chart card in yeah. two seconds. So yeah. it's really nice. That's yeah. nice to have. So we got some work to do. Let's get started. Well, actually, before we get started, if you guys remember the last episode, I asked a trivia question. Remember what it was? Yep. What year was the industry's first multifunction display system introduced? Now, the first two people to get that answer right in the comments for the last video would get a goodie bag full of Furuno swag. So the answer to that question is, drum roll please. <laughs> so we don't have the budget for real drums, <laughs> so <laughs> this is what we got. <laughs> exactly. The answer is 1998. That was the first year when they introduced the FRS 1000. And they, meaning me, I was there. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So I was, I was say, there, and yes, we introduced <laughs> the FRS 1000 in 1998. It was the industry's first uh, full-blown MFD. Mm -hmm. Really, kind of a cool product, and it, yeah. you know, it really opened up the you know the floodgates for what we have today. Exactly. It was really innovative at the time and mm -hmm. really cool. Yeah, it was a little before my time. That's but. right. 
So Neat. let's get started. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. While Eric's working under the console, I'm gonna see if I can knock this old underwater camera out so we can repurpose the hole for a brand new NMEA 2000 depth, speed, and temp sensor. The old camera's been leaking for a while, so I'm gonna cut the wires, knock the nuts off, and see if we can punch it out through the bottom so we can enlarge the hole and install the new sensor. So anytime you're dealing on a boat or with through hole fittings, whether it's plastic or bronze or stainless steel, you're gonna get stuff that's not gonna come off. These two plastic locking nuts for the camera housing put up a little bit of a fight. I ended up having to split them with a chisel to get them off. So now they're out of the way, now we can cut the wires and uh, pull this thing out of here. We're just gonna clip this ground wire and hook it back up later. And here goes the camera lead. So I just uh, took my knife and I ran it around the bottom underneath this washer just to break the seal. And there wasn't a whole lot of a seal, which makes sense why it was leaking. So if I pull this off, which there should have been a lot more silicone on this than what's here to keep this sealed, you can see the stem's loose, which means that's why it's been leaking. Let's see if we can just push it out. We might get lucky and just, <clears throat> oh, there, boy, there it went. Look at that. That uh, existing inch and a quarter uh, uh, camera yeah. through hole is too small for this new DST 800. What we're going to do is use one of these hole enlargement arbors. Mm -hmm. This was given to me by Pete Braffitt from Airmar when he yep. was here for Gemico. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way it works is a two stage arbor and it allows you to screw on the bigger hole saw that you need yeah. onto the arbor. And on the middle, using an adapter sometimes, we can screw on the original hole saw hole. Mm -hmm. So you're basically using the small hole saw as a guide. As a guide, as a centering guide. That fits in the original guide. hole. That's right. To then cut a larger hole. Yep. So, so that it's not wandering all over the place yeah, while you're and trying And look to... at how that looks. And that yeah. uses this middle one as a guide. And then we drill out to this new one. Underneath the hole now, I started up top just to cut through the first couple layers of fiberglass so that when I punch through, I don't shatter or splinter the, the glass. Now I'm gonna come down underneath we're going to drill up from the bottom and cut all the way through. So, masks on and goggles on for safety. And here we go. You can see the arbor is helping keep the hole saw centered like it should. And there we go. So, I've just got a bead of the, this uh, caulking around whatever we're using uh, around this uh, new bronze through hole. And it's really tight in there and it's gonna fit up in there without any trouble. Clayton's gonna um, squeeze a little bit on the top and then put the nut on with the uh, provided washer. And that's about it. It's a really snug fit and uh, should be no problem. So we found a spot for this FI-70 okay. where there was an old Clarion remote control for the radio. Oh yeah, 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 for the old stereo system, yeah. But we ran into a problem. It's a round hole for the Clarion, yeah. but it's smaller mm -hmm. and we have to offset it in order to fit the FI-70 so that we can bring down this plexiglass and uh, not have it be, interfere with it. So what that means is that we can't use the uh, arbor that we had earlier. The used arbor, on the, Yeah, and the enlarging arbor that we used on the through hole fitting that helps use the multiple hole saws. So what we have to do is get a little creative. So what we came up with is we made a, a basically a jig to help us cut the hole. This piece mounts on the back side of the dash. This piece is the exact same size as the hole we're going to cut out, so it'll act as a guide for the hole saw to slip over the top of it and allow us to drill through and punch through the dash. Now, if this works, this is a tip for you guys to use. If it doesn't work, just forget everything we just said because we're going to call the fiberglass guy. Yes, right. <laughs> That's right. We have him on speed dial now. Exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, let's get going. You're going to drill it, Clayton. Oh, am I? All right, yeah. Oh, God. All right, let's go. Well, the good news is that, Clayton, you did it. It worked. Yes. You used that offset uh, mm -hmm. piece of wood to sandwich the console, mm -hmm. squeeze down on it, it held it tight, and we were able to get a nice round hole mm -hmm. that's offset the perfect amount so yep. that we can still have clearance for the plexiglass. Mm -hmm. And let's see how it looks when we drop it in. Okay. Oh, that's Boom. Perfect. perfect. See, that'll give a nice, clear image of the depth or temperature mm -hmm. or whatever kind of information. Yeah. It holds about you know 30 or 40 different types of information we can get out of that FI-70, which is really nice mm -hmm. for when they're out fishing. 
I'm getting ready to install the Sirius XM BBWX4 InfoLink receiver. Now, it's a smaller unit than the previous BBWX1 that we took out, but it's got basically the same connection, connections. It's an Ethernet unit, so I have a network cable, power cable, and there's an audio cable that I'm gonna to use to bring the AUGS in jack. I'm gonna bring the audio out of here to bring into the Fusion radio so that thumps and we get, we get full music uh, into the Fusion system. There's also an antenna jack on here uh, that uses the same exact cable that was with the previous model and the same antenna basically. So we're not even gonna change it. We're gonna keep the small antenna as a spare in case there's ever a problem, but we're just gonna uh, basically hook it up and let it go. Um, one thing to notice is that uh, you should take a picture of the back of the unit before you install it just so you don't have to take it off again in case you forget the ID or you leave the paperwork at home when you call Sirius uh, to initiate uh, coverage or, or uh, you know, a subscription with them. Of course, the TZ Touch 2 weather functionality is phenomenal uh, with this unit and they're getting better. In fact, this BBWX4 will have new and better weather uh, in the coming year as uh, Sirius XM unleashes some new features. All right, so now what we're going to do is lay out the MCU's 004 control unit for the TZ Touch 2 displays. I've got my templates cut out and I've got it taped down to the dash where I want to put it and then we're going to blue tape around the perimeter and then I can remove the template that'll give me the the outline that I can use to cut around. Alright so now is the moment we get to drill. No pressure right? <laughs> Do we have Elias on a speed dial? Hopefully we don't have to call in. What? Whoa! What? Hey! What? You just cut through the Verado cable, man. Really? No, not really. <laughs> uh, it looks pretty good. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> yeah, it is nervous though when you drill into a console like that. You don't know really what's underneath it. All done. So the last thing we're going to install is the SDU001. This is a twin micro SD card reader that we're going to connect in via USB to the TC Touch 2 displays. Now what this is, is it gives them two extra card slots. We're putting in some extra memory cards or extra chart cards should they choose to do so. We're going to put it right here in the under the console, uh, right next to the hatch for the electronics access. So, because they really don't need to get to it all the time and we want to put it in a spot where they can actually close this up and lock it so that nobody can get on the boat and steal all their chart cards or steal their data. That's an important thing. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing I've done is I've taken their flush mounting template and I've trimmed it up and uh, taped it up on the wall here. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to run blue tape around it like we did on the dash for the MCU004. That'll give us the outline to cut and we're going to use the hole saw and punch out the holes and then trim up the rest. So it should be pretty straightforward. It was up on the dash. So let's get started. I'm going to take the blue tape here and finish laying this out. Now we've got our template laid out. We've got these black marks here are the center lines, center holes basically for the uh, hole saw to drill. So I'm going to mark those. And there we have it. Card reader's installed. Now we can hook it up and use it. All right, so all of the hard installations are done. We have all the displays are in, all the accessories are in, the radio, the fusion, all that junk is all mounted in the boat now, which means all of that part is done. That's right. We're done with that part. That's right. The next thing we have to do is finish pulling up all the cables and make all the connections. And then, theoretically, we should be able to power it up. I mean, we're so close, so close. <laughs> the suspense is killing us if you can't tell. That's right, you know, all the sharp cutting tools are put away, which is really nice Thank to get God. them. We still have all our fingers, <laughs> so it's really nice, All right? of them. Yeah, and uh, you know, and now that we're on to the NME A2000 connections and testing out mm -hmm. the NME A2000 system. So stay with us for the next episode where we'll go through the NME A2000 system and, you know, in completely show everybody some of the rules and some of the things you have to do with NME A2000 yeah. and how to make the system work. Nothing to be scared of, 
just what we have to do and we'll fire everything up. Stay with us. Awesome. So thanks for watching. And if you like the exciting content that you've seen, click the link below to like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you'll be the first one to know when we have new content available with new product information and new exciting stuff from Furuno.